Okay, a lung abscess is a localized area of pus somewhere in the alveolar tissue called the parenchyma. Here's a picture of the lung abscess within the parenchyma or alveolar tissue in the lung. It might develop just because of some aspirating some kind of foreign body or following bacterial pneumonia or because of a mechanical obstruction in the bronchi, like a tumor. Um, the signs and symptoms of a lung abscess, you're going to see fever and chills. You're also going to notice some weight loss in the patient because of the um, trouble with um, the lung. Okay, sorry about that. Phone rings every now and then. Um, all right, you're also going to start noticing in this patient some chest pain, um, a productive cough that because of the irritation that the abscess is causing in the lung. You also might start noticing some dull or absent lung sounds, especially over the area where the abscess is. Um, to diagnose it, we're going to get a chest x-ray and a CT scan, um, and you'll be able to actually locate and see the abscess on those um, scans. A blood and sputum culture is going to let us know what's causing it and um, and see you know really how much of the lung tissue is involving. Um, a thoracentesis is going to be sent is going to be drawn um, and then we'll send that fluid off for analysis to see what has caused it and see what we can do then to fix it. To treat it, we'll do some postural drainage and we'll learn about postural drainage here in a little while. But it's in your book if you want to go ahead and look it up. Um, antibiotics can also be given, um, especially because. Um, typically, it is going to follow some kind of infection or it's going to put your patient at risk for developing an infection. So giving them antibiotics can either help treat it or prevent um, further infections from occurring. If it's really severe, potentially a lobectomy might need to be performed. Here's a picture of a lobectomy where they've cut out the top um, lobe, the upper lobe of that lung. Um, they also can do wedge resections if it's not very large. Um, and that's where they go in and they just cut out a piece of the lung. There it is right there. Um, Typically, they won't end up having to do a total pneumonectomy, but here is a picture of what a total pneumonectomy looks like. Okay, here's postural drainage. Um, there's different postures you can put a patient in just to promote different um, drainage, and we want to put them in each um, position for a certain amount of time just to help stimulate the lungs from emptying. So to stimulate emptying of the right upper lobe, we're going to put them sitting up. Um, the apical segment of the left upper lobe will put them hunched over. The right middle lobe, we will um, elevate the foot of the bed and turn them on their side. Same with the left upper lobe. Um, the right lower lobes and left lower lobes, we turn them on the affected sides and then drop them down as well. Uh, Alright, let's look at emphyema. This is, a, in, this is just a general term and it's talking about any kind of pus in the body, but we are really looking at in the respiratory tract. So when we're talking about empyema in respiratory, we're looking at pus in the pleural cavity. It might be caused by chest trauma, pneumonia, or tuberculosis. Here's a picture of the pus that's forming in the actual pleural cavity. And that's pretty nasty to me whenever I think about that, what's actually happening in that lung. The signs and symptoms of an empyema is fever, chest pain, dyspnea, anorexia, malaise, diminished or absent lung sounds. All those things are caused just because of the amount of pus that is clogging and occluding and causing so much irritation and discomfort for that patient. The only way to treat it um, is either to do a thoracentesis or a thoracotomy. The thoracentesis we've talked about several times where they insert either a needle or a tube to drain out that fluid. Um, a thoracotomy is a lot more invasive and here this picture is showing a thoracotomy. They do a surgical opening of the thorax. Um, they insert a chest tube for drainage, and once the pus, pus is drained, eventually the temperature is going to drop, their symptoms resolve, and hopefully it, it really helps. The thoracentesis can be used also just to further diagnose what's causing the problem, um, and if it's bacterial in nature, we can then just give um, broad-spectrum antibiotics or specific antibiotics if we're able to get a culture to show us specifically what has caused this in the patient. All right, I'm going to take a break, and we'll come back and we'll look at the influenza.